you guys how's it going so this video is a little bit on the heavy side I know I make a lot of really joyful and happy things but I just felt really inspired to make this video because of some interactions that I've had this week so before I say this before I get into this video I want to put it out there that I know that anytime someone has reached out to me to offer words of support or to say anything about my loss I know that everything is meant in a way that is true trying to be helpful. I know that nobody says these things trying to be malicious and trying to hurt people, but I just want to put it out there that these might be catchphrases that we have all been used to saying, that we might have heard other people saying in the past, and frankly, they are outdated and they are not appropriate anymore. So these are things that people have legitimately said to me and nothing is going to be like ridiculously crazy or anything. Sometimes words can make things worse. If you are wondering if it's something that you should say to a lost parent or to someone who's experienced a miscarriage or who's experienced an infant loss, just don't say it. Just don't. I would rather you sit there with me in silence or come visit me and ask me to go do something with you rather than saying something that could potentially be triggering or hurtful to me. And I know that lots of other lost moms feel the same way. The first one is your baby is in a better place. I am what I would consider to be spiritual and that's a about it. I'm not a religious person. I don't know in my heart for sure that there is a better place, number one. And number two, to say that there is a better place for my child rather than with me is hurtful. To say that my child is in a place that's better than they could be with their parent, that's hurtful. And in my mind, the best place that my child could be is with me and still inside my body and safe. So that can be really hurtful when you say those things. The second thing that I would advise to not say to someone who's experienced a miscarriage or who has had a loss in any way is, oh, you're young, you can have more children. While that may be true, when I had my miscarriage, I wasn't grieving just for the fact that I wasn't pregnant anymore. I was grieving for the fact that, that I had plans for this child. I had plans for this baby. And while I could have those same plans for another child, I'm not grieving the loss of only being pregnant. I'm grieving the loss of this baby and that is okay. I am grieving for this child right now and while I know that there are other options and that I could potentially have more children, it just, it stings a little bit when someone doesn't understand that you are grieving this particular child or this particular life. And I hope that that makes sense. I feel like I'm being kind of rambly, but I hope that that makes sense and I hope that that resonates with you. If you have questions about anything that I'm saying in this video or if you want clarification or if you want to make sure that you are saying the right things or being cautious when you talk, please ask me questions. I'm not an expert, but I can tell you what it feels like for me. I can also point you in the direction of other lost moms that I follow. The next thing is that you can cannot fix the grief that I am feeling. It's something that I have to go through. And I've even told this to Brian, my husband. He is a fixer. He wants to make all of the bad things go away with a concrete solution. And he's really good at that most of the time. And a lot of his solutions are really helpful. But sometimes I just need to go through a process and not have someone try to fix it. While I know that people get uncomfortable with people who are grieving or who are sad, please know that when you try to offer a concrete solution, sometimes that's not what I need. And sometimes that's maybe not what other lost parents need. So maybe just come and sit with us listen without offering a solution, listen without offering maybe your own story. I know that a lot of people try to connect in that way, but sometimes I just need my story to be heard without listening and trying to offer, you know, condolences to your story. So sometimes it just can't be fixed. And this is one of those times. For me, someone said, at least you didn't have a stillbirth or at least you didn't lose your baby later in your pregnancy. 
if you are gonna start a sentence with something like that that says at least, then maybe you just don't. At least I didn't have a stillbirth. I mean, I understand what people are trying to say. I understand that it could have been worse. I understand and, and I don't understand. I don't know what the grief feels like to have a stillbirth or to have a later term loss. But I do know that I saw the heartbeat of my seven week baby. And at that minute for me, that was my child. So I don't know if it would feel similar if I had gone through an entire pregnancy and then delivered a child that was no longer alive. I don't see how it could have been worse. I don't see that this early loss is better than a later term loss. Like I don't, I don't understand. I do understand that people are trying to help and to make me feel better. I understand that, that maybe there is a scenario that's worse, but it's not, it's not any better, it's not any worse, it's all grief and it's all crappy. And I'm so sorry that any of us have to go through it, any of us at all. The next one is asking if we're gonna have more children. I think that number one, that's very personal. I did a little bit ago ask for questions for a Q and A and I answered that one in there, but I feel like just on the daily, I get that question from a lot of people and I feel like they kind of assume because I had a miscarriage that now I want to replace this child. And even if we did choose to have another child, which we answered that question in the Q&A, so I will go ahead and leave that down below if you wanna check it out. But even if we did choose to have more children, that child would never be a replacement for what I lost. And you might say that that is kind of silly, but again, in my mind, in my heart, when I saw a heartbeat flickering on that screen, that was my baby, that was my child. He or she is not something or someone that can be replaced in my mind. That person will always be a unique person to me, no matter how small. A person's a person, no matter how small. The next one that I wanna talk about is everything happens for a reason. And I know where this is going. I know why people say this. I think that people are uncomfortable with grief, number one. They're trying to turn it around and make it a positive thing rather than something that makes them feel uncomfortable. But everything happens for a reason. If you think about sort of what you are saying, you are saying that my child died for a reason. That doesn't, it doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel good to hear. Yeah, it just, it doesn't feel good. So that one, if you're gonna say everything happened for a reason, maybe try something like, I understand that you're really sad right now, how can I help? Something like that where it shows that you wanna care for me, where you want to be with me in my time of grief. And if you don't, that's okay too. I totally get it. Grief is uncomfortable, it's messy, it's sad. I totally get it, I understand, but if you are going to be there for me, this is not something that I wanna hear. The next one is, it wasn't a real baby or something like that. So, I mean, I think we can all kind of see the problem here. Maybe you didn't consider the baby that I was pregnant with to be a baby. And maybe in another world, I wouldn't have either. When I see two lines on a pregnancy test, when I have an ultrasound, all of those things make me feel so connected to being pregnant. When I have a pregnancy symptom, I feel so connected to my pregnancy and the plans for the child that I have. And honestly, for that child, when I see a heartbeat, I'm like, cool, everything is gonna be great. But then it wasn't. So for people who, can belittle those feelings and thoughts. It's just, it's not cool. So if you don't think that an early loss is someone losing a baby and they do, maybe just don't, don't go there. Just don't, don't say it. Just, just don't, please. And then the last one is, why are you still so sad? Why are you still grieving? It's like, they expect me to just move on. And I feel like this happens to people who have early losses more so than people who experience stillbirth. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is just something that I've kind of noticed. But I feel like people expect you to just move on. So miscarriage, it's common. We already know that, right? It's one in four, maybe even one in three women experience a miscarriage in their life. So it is a common thing, but 
it is not a happy thing. And I think that everyone processes differently. Some people are okay sooner than others. And some people are okay one day and then they're not okay the next day. And for people to say that I am not valid for still having grief, these days, it blows my mind that people can even go there. And I think that it comes from a good place where people want to just say, hey, let's just be happy now, let's not be sad because people don't like to talk about sad things and to be sad. So maybe they don't wanna be around someone who is sad in that moment or who has been sad for an extended period of time. I know that we feed off of our emotions as people, but if I am still sad about my miscarriage a year from now, that is okay. And that is the process that I have to go through. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I am contemplating a part two of this video, what to say to someone who has had a miscarriage or an infant loss. If that is something that would interest you guys, feel free to leave that down in the comments below or give this video a big thumbs up so that I know that you liked it. I also wanted to just say that, again, this is from my experience. These are things that I have heard from people and I just want to put it out there that this is my experience. If these things don't bother you, that's cool. That's totally fine. I'm not saying that my way of grieving is correct and yours is incorrect. So please don't leave that stuff down in the comments either. It's not nice. <laughs> so let's all just grieve how we need to grieve. These are simply ideas. If you're looking to talk to someone who has had a loss or do something for them or what not to do, I guess. So thank you guys again so much for stopping by. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Again, if you would like to subscribe, my name is Caitlin. Welcome. You can hit that red subscribe button down below and have a good time with us. Usually my videos are a little bit more upbeat than this, but I thought it was really important to get this message out. If you've experienced a miscarriage or an infant loss, please know that my heart goes out to you as well. And I am sending you great, great big hugs. And I'm sorry that you have to experience that and be part of this awful club. So yeah, if you are currently subscribed, make sure that you hit that bell notification as well. And if you want to find me on other social media platforms, you can find me over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can find all of that stuff down in the description box below. And by the way, you guys have fun today.